Greetings, my name is Sonia Sedmak and I'm with the PhilF Committee. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Kai Mai people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the land I stand on. I recognise their connection to this land and these waters and thank them for their support and nourishment of this coastline and its ecosystem since time immemorial. I pay my respect to the elders past, present and future. This land was never ceded, it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So welcome and welcome also on behalf of the Masood Foundation of Australia to another special online event that PhilEF's organised. This year we've dedicated to resistance movements that, have def that are defending the rights of oppressed minorities around the world. On this occasion, we're um, looking at the uh, emergence of the anti-Taliban national resistance movement in the Panjshir Valley, led by Ahmad Massoud and joined by other resistance movements across Afghanistan. We'll also be looking at the online education pro project that's been organised by the Massoud Foundation with a lot of international support. It's aimed at the girls in Afghanistan who've been um, denied the basic right to education. We'll hear from Bilal Wahid, who's the founder and director of the Masood Foundation Australia. Bilal has been deeply involved in community-based services uh, for years, as well as engaging in conferences and forums advocating for human rights and social justice in Afghanistan. We will also hear from Khalil Nasri, who's the director of the Ariana Australian Association, a community-based cultural entity that um, is assisting the Tajik immigrants and refugees to integrate into the wider Australian society. Uh, the, these speakers will be introduced by Silvia Greco, who's the um, Amnesty International convener. Hello everyone, my name is Silvia Greco. I'm an Amnesty International convener from the eastern suburbs of Sydney on Bijigal and Gadigal land. I pay respect to the elders, past, present and future, and, and I acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded. We are here to talk about the dire situation in Afghanistan and see what we can do to help. Since August 14, 15, when the US left Afghanistan and the Taliban seized power, Human rights abuses have become the norm. So this is a long list that we've received at Amnesty, and I'm reading through some of, of these human rights abuses, killing civilians and also soldiers that had surrendered, blocking food and humanitarian aid to the Panjshir Valley, the only place in Afghanistan that refused to surrender to the Taliban, banning girls from attending school beyond primary classes, banning women from work and forcing them to stay at home, not allowing freedom of expression, for example, protest, beating up journalists and women who speak up. So what can we do from here? Amnesty International is putting pressure on the Australian government and we need your help to do that. So here are our three main asks to the government, the Australian government. One, expand humanitarian intake and uh, additional places for people fleeing the Taliban, prioritizing women, girls, human rights defenders, and those at risk because of their work either with Australian forces in Afghanistan or NGOs. Second, quickly reform the community sponsorship program so that it will be easier and less costly for people across Australia to welcome Australian Afghani refugees into their communities. And then lastly, grant permanent visa to all Afghan nationals who are in Australia on temporary protection visas. In other words, don't send them back to Afghanistan. You'll find the letters and the petitions on the PhilEF website. Please make your voice heard. And now I will pass on to Bilal Wahid, who's the director of the Massoud Foundation in Australia, which is a not-for-profit organisation that is starting, um, amongst other things, a program to help girls getting on with their education. Thank you.
Hi, uh, my name is Bilal and I am the director and founder of Masjid Foundation Australia. Uh, the Masjid Foundation Australia is an Australian uh, non-profit organization uh, fostering an enduring relationship between Australians and the people of Afghanistan. Uh, our, uh, our mission is uh, to bring Australian communities together uh, by promoting cultural awareness and education both in Australia and in Afghanistan and to bring peace within uh, Afghanistan by humanitarian and charitable efforts and uh, to support the most impoverished people in need of help in the uh, areas of um, provision of education, healthcare, nutrition, and the day-to-day -day needs uh, with a particular focus on dis disadvantaged uh, women and children. Uh, as you all know, uh, on the 15th of uh, August uh, 2021, the Taliban uh, seized control of the capital city Kabul in Afghanistan. Uh, within a week, uh, they turned their attention uh, north uh, towards the uh, Panjshir province, which is uh, currently under uh, military attack by the Taliban. Uh, the Panjshir Valley uh, is the last resistance uh, stronghold in Afghanistan which rejects the radical and barbaric ideologies and activities of terrorist groups. And despite uh, uh, this, the people of Panjshir Valley did not initiate violence or war, and instead they clearly communicated uh, their desire for peaceful negotiation uh, to, uh, for the Taliban uh, to recognize equal rights for women and an equitable uh, legal recognition and uh, treatment of uh, all ethnic groups uh, within Afghanistan. But uh, unfortunately, uh, despite these attempts at peace, the Taliban forces commence an unprovoked military uh, offensive against uh, the civilian uh, people of uh, Panjshir Valley. Uh, currently, um, the Taliban are starving the population uh, who are trapped in Panjshir province and have placed a blockade on uh, the Panjshir Valley and do not allow the provision of uh, basic aid such as food and other supplies to reach the, the people of uh, Panjshir province. Um, the civilians and uh, who are trapped uh, in this situation, they urgently need uh, food and medical supplies uh, because they are mostly farmers and there are no depots uh, of food to store food for a long time and what they already had uh, 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 it's running out. Uh, also um, in the Masjid Foundation Australia uh, we are facilitating online learning education for girls in Afghanistan who have been denied uh, uh, denied of the basic right to primary, secondary and higher education uh, but uh, unfortunately this is uh, one of the many discriminatory and barbaric ideologies of the Taliban which does not represent the true value and respect for the role of women in our society. Uh, this is uh, an important and a vital project for us and we are seeking help uh, to educate these girls because the future uh, generation of girls in Afghanistan definitely deserve better. And it is uh, only with the support of the international community that uh, aid can be provided to these girls and people uh, trapped in the Panjshir Valley who are currently the victim of an unprovoked military attack from the Taliban. Uh, it is uh, uh, important to recognize that the Taliban are not representing the people of Afghanistan and do not share the true ideals of the people of Afghanistan. Thank you. Hello, my name is Khalil Nasri. I'm a director of Ariana Australian Association. I will provide you a brief synopsis of what has happened in the Panjshir province of Afghanistan. 
On the 15th of August 2021, the terrorist group known as the Taliban seized control of all Afghanistan except the Panjshir province and the neighboring district of Andarab. The National Resistance Front, led by Ahmad Massoud, is still holding out in the valleys of the Panjshir. The last bastion of resistance, rejecting the radical and barbaric ideologies of the Taliban. The National Resistance Front is fighting for values of equal rights for women and equal legal recognition and treatment of all ethnic groups within Afghanistan. Values which are part of the moderate school of Hanafi Islam. Unfortunately, the Taliban, emboldened by the silence of the international community in a thirst for vengeance, have been waging a full-scale war on the Panjshir. The people who have sought refuge there and all its inhabitants, supported by 1,200 or so Pakistani commandos. For over a month, the Taliban placed a blockade on the Panjshir and did not allow provision of basic aid such as food and medicine. Telecommunications and internet were also cut off, isolating the Panjshir from the rest of the world. No independent observers or journalists were allowed to report on what was actually happening. In the meantime, the Taliban killed hundreds of civilians and used young boys as human shields when they were beaten back by the resistance. The Afghan Red Crescent Society has only now collected the bodies of more than 300 civilians in order to identify them. There are also verified reports of many men being bundled into trucks and transported to unknown locations where they were shuffled into shipping containers and set alight. The resistance having retreated to the side valleys, the Taliban have now taken over the main road and surrounding villages, where they have occupied people's homes. They do not allow the remaining men to work the fields. They carry out searches of homes demanding weapons, and if none can be found, the owners are either beaten or taken away. On many instances, the Taliban's actions in the Panjshir and neighboring Andarab are similar to Nazi pogroms with a deliberate aim of genocide. Many families have been forced to leave their homes and seek refuge in Kabul. But they're not safe there either. We have reports that every night the Taliban take 10 to 20 young men of Panjshiri descent from areas of Kabul known to be inhabited by them, never to be seen again. Those few families remaining in the province are forced to provide food for 20 to 50 Taliban. For innocent families already facing hardships, this is an extra burden which, if not complied with, puts them in danger of losing their lives. The conduct of the Taliban is in direct breach of Article 8 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court in a myriad of other international conventions. Put simply, it is in breach of international humanitarian law and constitutes war crimes. We need the international humanitarian community to urgently speak out and condemn the actions of the Taliban. Furthermore, pressure needs to be put on democratic governments to support the resistance who are fighting for the values we cherish in the West. Supporting the resistance will ensure that the Taliban aim of creating an Afghanistan devoid of art, culture and civilization, an Afghanistan which is the beehive of international terrorism, does not eventuate and take hold. Pressure also needs to be brought in Pakistan to stop its interference in Afghanistan. We thank you for your empathy and assistance and look forward to your continued cooperation in holding the Taliban to account for their crimes. Thank you.